do you think that, you know, and because you had to kind of sort of get this going and figure everything out yourselves, do you think it was a, a big loss or um, in some ways an advantage that uh, Don Bluth studio had gone away uh, just a few years before you guys got started was, did that leave a hole? Is that, or. Yeah, it was interesting. You know, I suppose nothing is ever that bad, you know, because yes, it was, it was initially for the Irish industry. uh, It was, it was massive to lose uh, Bluth studios um, out of Dublin, but from, that so many small studios started so you know you um you know whether there was people who had worked in blue studios or people like me who had expected to maybe get employment there that didn't you know kind of thing and that that uh, went on to set up our own studio so there's a number of small studios it was also around that time where it became um like even in terms of um the kind of technical capabilities of studios smaller studios you know um having computers that you can run after effects on and uh, things like that, that started, you know, that we're talking about the late 90s, early 2000s. So those kind of opportunities had just become available to us where we could make a short film with not a huge amount of money or we could uh, plan our feature and, you know, um, you know, get enough uh, computers to uh, be able to process and, you know, scan the uh, the drawings that we were doing or work with partners that could do that uh, as we did with our Belgian partners uh, on The Secret of Kells. So, um, it was certainly an opportunity. I don't think we would have seen it or anybody in Ireland would have seen it as an opportunity at the time, but it did turn out to be. And I think, you know, the industry now, um, you know, the, there's the population of Ireland is something like 5 million. We have about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 people working full time in animation wow. in the country. Is, you know, it, it, it's a lot. It's certainly on par with the live action film industry here, which gets a lot of work. Um uh, so it's uh, it's very very strong. We are in a unique position because we're English speaking, but we're also on the edge of Europe. Uh, we have access to some kind of soft financing models. We have a great tax break here in Ireland that um, makes it very attractive for um, producers to co-produce with us. Uh, and so we really do have a, a unique um, set of circumstances. Even in Kilkenny, I mean, there was no animation industry of course in Kilkenny the, the town where a cartoon saloon is uh I think there's something like 30,000 people uh in the city of Kilkenny we have two animation studios in Kilkenny there's an, a oh. cartoon saloon there's lighthouse studios which is set up um I think over five years ago now by um uh at Clint Eland of uh, Mercury Filmworks and it's run by Claire Finn who's an uh, incredible person um, and, uh, you know, they they have a lot of work going on. They were recently worked on uh, uh, the Cuphead show, Bob's Burgers, you know, uh, feature. Oh, wow. So they're just uh, incredible. So there's a massive community in Kilkenny that wasn't there before. Oh. Um, so, yeah, sometimes what you think is bad luck is actually great luck. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, you talked about trying to w- wanting to find your own voice and telling the kind of stories that you guys want to tell. And some of that, I think quite obviously has been the aesthetic that you guys have chosen. Um, But some of it is also in the stories that you've chosen to tell. For instance, Secret of Kells is, in my opinion, a a bold first film. Um, But then even your second feature film, um, The Breadwinner, I think, is another bold choice. Um, Is, can you talk about just what kind of goes into when you... um, decide you want to tell a story uh, is it um is it just something that strikes you or 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 is there any sort of active sort of working against what everyone else is doing like what what tends to draw you to a story and, and seem like it's going to be worthwhile to to really kind of work on for a number of years and talk about for a number of years after yeah and I, I suppose it's interesting because we're different at different times of our life so the secret of Kells was first conceived by uh, Tom Moore and Aidan Hart when they were in school, <laughs> in uh, when they were like teenagers, uh, when they were in school together. That's where that the uh, kind of came from, and and originally it was a kind of more adult focused uh, film, really kind of a film about two monks and their kind of philosophical discussions as they faced the onslaught of a Viking invasion invasion. It was, um, and, and it morphed as, as, uh, as, you know, Aiden and, and Tom morphed. And then as I joined and Paul joined and we all, um, started to kind of input. Um, and then we had a like, great screenwriter for Brice who came on, um, once we, um, started to, to get the money together to, to make the secret of Kells. So it, um, 
it became the story that we were most interested in telling at the time. It really is a story about, it's about, you know, finding hope in the face of, you know, um, uncertainty, you know, when chaos enters your life, what, what is it that you can, what, what is it that you hold sacred? What is it that you can hold on to? Um, these were things that were really interesting to us as storytellers and certainly to Tom, um, you know, at, at the time when we were making The Secret of Kells, we all, because we're, you know, it's a studio that we set up because we're a group of friends who like to make stuff together and not because we were a group of business people who really wanted to run a, you know, a huge studio. Um, finding the stories that can um, make us really passionate and make our teams really passionate and sustain that passion for those number of years is the most important thing uh, to us. We'll never be Pixar or Disney or, you know, uh, we, we don't uh, we don't want to be. We we want to have our own voice. We want to tell stories, um, the stories that we can tell. Uh, again, I, I'm drawn again to kind of speak about the unique kind of um, position that we're in, you know, with, with the breadwinner we co-produced with um, uh, aircraft pictures in Canada um, and uh, with uh, our, our partners in Luxembourg, Studio 352. Uh, you'll always find other studios who have um, skills that are um, compatible with your own uh, and that are also passionate about telling stories that might not otherwise get told. And I think that's what um, um, I think that's what kind of motivates us the most in, uh, telling stories that are worth telling that that are not going to make huge sense for a huge studio or something like that. Just, um, you know, because there, there was a time even with Wolfwalkers where, you know, telling a particular story about um, a, a, a town, you know, um, that, that uh, it did, you know, it didn't make as much sense as, as it does now in retrospect, you know, it, it wouldn't have, uh, it, it would have looked a little darker maybe than, than, than what we had done um, with Song of the Sea. Um, so yeah, that that's I think that's what what motivates us most. Mm-hmm.